How is it going everybody? My name is DeMarco and welcome to my review of Deathloop. Now, first and foremost, I want to say thank you. I know everybody else has already put out their reviews on this game and I'm late to the party, but I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for checking mine out and supporting the channel and this video. I really do appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get started beginning with the story. Deathloop stars our party pooper protagonist Colt who wakes up on the mysterious island of Black Reef with no memory of who he is, what he's doing there or hell any knowledge of the loop itself this serves as a really good entry point for us as players as the knowledge that we gain is the exact knowledge that colt has and credit where credit's due arcane does a very good job of not mysteriously giving colt any knowledge that we don't have which some games really do struggle with i never felt like suddenly colt learned something that i have no idea where he got it from so Good job for making that just work, Arcane. Now, very early on, Colt learns that the only way to break this loop and earn his freedom is to perform what's called the Golden Loop. And that is to take out eight visionaries, eight leaders of this island, all within one day. But it's easier said than done as you quickly not learn and realize that certain visionaries are only available during certain times. And you have to manipulate their schedules and play Puppet Master in this murder mystery. Although, it's not much as a mystery. We'll talk about that for sure in order to get them to where you need to to perform and execute this golden loop the game takes place over the course of four periods of the day you have morning afternoon evening and night and during those four time periods you can explore one of four districts that change based on the time of day that you explore them and that was a pretty cool mechanic new routes will open up for you to go through and to mangle with and meddle with as well as new events will take place people will be in different locations so effectively in some sense you're exploring 16 different maps although that's not really wholly accurate, but it does provide enough difference where there is a unique path that you never saw before, and it makes it exciting to explore these regions, even though they are generally the same as what you saw previously. You have a main story in Deathloop. It takes place in the form of visionary leads, and these visionary leads, each of the eight visionaries has their own path, and you'll explore different well, leads that you have to find out where they go, what they do, how you can manipulate them and move them to better suit your needs to perform this golden loop. And that will require you to go to different districts at different times of the day, explore, investigate, and then move on to the next one. This is inherently exciting until you realize that it all boils down once you've completed all eight of the visionary leads, you find out what that golden loop is. And this murder puzzle that's been set up for you kind of feels like someone already solved the puzzle for you, which really does suck. There's no alternative ways in order to solve this murder mystery, and it makes it not much of a mystery. Sure, you can say it's more about the journey than the destination, but even then, throughout the mystery, you're told exactly where to go and how to solve it and where you need to go at what time. Everything is basically spelled out for the player. Now, this has a pro and a con, and I have to admit that the alternative to it is the player gets lost, has no idea where to go, gets frustrated, becomes unimmersed, and then doesn't want anything to do with the game. So I'd much prefer the way it's set up here than the alternative. But I do think that there's just a little bit too much hand-holding that while some people feel like it doesn't insult their intelligence, and I don't think it did, but I do think that there's a lot more opportunity to creatively express a different way to make this golden loop achievable unfortunately that's not the case everybody will perform the loop the same exact way to get the end of to get to the end of the game you also have side quests in the game these come in the form of equipment leads but are drastically less interesting than the visionary leads on the visionary leads not only do you learn about the visionary themselves you also get a lot of lore about the island the eon program which is supposedly behind this death loop as well as the interactions that the visionary has with one another so in that sense it makes them way more three-dimensional than i ever anticipated a prismatic cornucopia for mixing and matching like paint like love do i enjoy the spotlight <laughs> The spotlight is nothing but the focused attention of the eye at the center of the world. So the equipment leads, on the other hand, are the side quests, and that will effectively, well, you'll get equipment from it. Now, arguably, it's very cool because it's equipment that you can get no other way, but there's definitely more love shown to some of these than others. For example, one of them will have you go through this 
casino-like game called Moxies. It's a puzzle that you have to get through and it's a race against the clock to beat a record. And there's others, for example, like this present that's left for you out in the open and you go investigate and exactly what you expect happens and then it leads to, well, you getting this new equipment. So while the attempt was there to make it more creative, ultimately it kind of falls flat and becomes, well, pretty predictable. And that's kind of the theme when it comes to the story of Deathloop is predictable. While the island itself is the most interesting aspect of the game, the story runs a little thin. What is interesting though? The visionaries. The visionaries are so well done. Their unique personalities are as eccentric as the concept of Deathloop itself. And I loved hearing their banter, hearing their interactions. The dynamic between Colt and Juliana is one of the best I've seen in many games lately. I'm a drinker, occasionally a drunk man about island. Everyone knows me, everyone hates me, handy with a gun, quick with a joke, I dress well, and why the fuck is everyone wearing a mask? You forgot to mention your little uh, hackama thingy. You'll get there. It's a hackama jig. I'm done playing this your way. It's the cult show from now on. <laughs> okay, all aboard, sweetie. Choo choo. I said cult <laughs> show, not cult. Fuck it. Next stop, security office. Choo choo. <laughs> the banter between Juliana and Colt is so well done. It's one of the best parts of the game. I, I really hope to see more of them. I always loved hearing Juliana come over the radio to taunt me, but unfortunately, this is used for, well, some pretty big reveals. And again, it's just another way that the story falls a bit flat in Deathloop. The more interesting part of the story was learning about the island. I know some people won't really care about the lore of the world, but you can tell that Arcane really put a lot of heart and soul into building it, and it shows because it's one of the most unique landscapes and one that I really hope we can revisit in a future title. It was it was brilliant. There are multiple endings as with previous arcane games. There's three to be exact. I'm not going to spoil them here, but they're about as predictable as they possibly can be. There was almost it seemed like no attempt from arcane to try to do anything shocking or creative and the endings of the game are not nearly as creative as the rest of the game and I think that's ultimately why it stood out to me so much and why it left kind of a sour taste in my mouth now I loved it it was emotional it was good the ending I got was completely appropriate albeit very predictable however ultimately it just doesn't live up to it was one of those moments where the credits roll and I just sort of go oh okay that's it all right cool that was, that was good Alright, alright, see ya, thanks. Let's move on to the gameplay, shall we? Starting off with the customization, which is some of the best that I've seen in a lot of recent titles. You can first start off by picking whichever weapon you want. I've heard some people complain about the variation or the quantity of weapons in the game. I personally felt like it was alright, maybe, maybe two or three more just to really round it out, but between the unique legendary weapons that you can get through doing the equipment quests, the equipment leads, the side quests, if you will, mixed with the normal ones in the game, which when you get to the rare versions, there are tiers of rarity, will have unique properties to them. I thought that there was more than enough, especially when you get to the rarer tiers, you might find, for example, the Limp 10, the submachine gun that you get, which now shoots bullets that absorb your enemy's health with the vampire ability, or the nail gun, which instead of shooting normal nails, now shoots exploding ones, or the four pounder, which instead of shooting normal bullets, now wherever they impact emits a cloud of toxic gas. Each of these weapons can be customized with trinkets. The rarer tiers of weapons can have up to three of them, and these do about what you expect, whether it's faster reload times, or they can, you can swap to them faster, or some more unique where if you shoot behind, if you shoot somebody, it'll do damage to a person that's behind them, these sorts of things. But more or less, they're about what you'd expect. Beyond that, you have slabs, the powers in Deathloop, which 
are similar to what we've seen in past Dishonored titles. You do have Blink, or in this game it's called Shift, and you also have others like Turning Invisible, linking enemies to one another so that whatever happens to one happens to all of them, and several others that are really, really fun to play around with. Ultimately, there were a couple I felt were essential. Invisibility was one of them, as well as Blink, especially in the PvP. Blink, you just cannot go on without, as far as I could tell, it was pretty much essential. But each of these abilities, each of these slabs, also come with slab upgrades. And there's two slots on every slab to put in an upgrade. And these might range from, for example, on the invisibility, you might choose to take one that whenever you do perform a kill or a violent action, it doesn't put you out of invisibility. Or alternatively, you might find one that whenever you stand perfectly still, nothing, your power meter doesn't drain. So it allows you to stay invisible for much longer further adding to the customization, and each of them have two slots that you can put in. Lastly, there's also character trinkets, trinkets that are equipped directly to cult, and this is where these really interesting builds are finalized, and arguably, this is where the replayability comes from. What's lacking in the story replayability is made up for the types of builds that you can create. The character trinkets do a lot of really unique things, from allowing you to hack a further distance that you normally would, to being able to hack mines, which normally you just have to manually disable, and then detonate them remotely once they're hacked. You might also be able to find one that allows you to double jump, it's one of the first that you get in the game, or ones that add more bars of health, lets you regenerate power more, gives you more power meters. There's a build for everything, and if I ever go back to the game, it's probably going to be one, for the stellar gameplay, which we'll talk about, but also, too, because I want to experiment with all this different creative options that you can. I've seen videos of people doing things I never even thought of with some of these abilities, and now I want to hop back in and try them out myself. The last customizable aspect are the skins in the game, and thank God there's no microtransactions in Deathloop whatsoever. Skins are unlocked through playing the multiplayer mode as Juliana, which we will discuss further, but they're only unlocked by doing that, and you can get all the skins in the game. I easily, I even predicted in the past that microtransactions would be implemented when I first started seeing the skins, the bright pink skin on the weapons in the game. I said, nah, this is something that they're going to charge for, and they don't. And what a relief it is that we're getting the full thing as opposed to selling everything in these small, stupid fucking packs that make not actually microtransactions because they cost $10 a piece. Because I don't know what's going on, but you get the full game here, and I am so so grateful and whether it's arcane or playstation with their exclusivity deal or bethesda whoever needs to be thanked thank you next up we're going to move on to the level design and the lack thereof of it in some instances it's not bad it's not bad but it does feel distinctly like there's not as many avenues to explore and i could tell you why you see, depending on what time of day you go into any given district will change what paths are there for you to go through. And of course, they're working in the same map. They could just change certain aspects of it. This means that effectively at any given time of the day, if you go in the morning or the evening, not all of those avenues are open for you to go down and to explore. And ultimately, it really narrows down. While it does make it worth going and visiting them at different times of the day, when you are there at that time of the day, it feels much smaller than it actually can be versus if everything was opened up at the same time. As opposed to Dishonored where there's eight different ways to get in any single building and you could stealth in or go this way or through a vent or through a window or underground or through a tunnel or make your own hole in the wall. So many inventive ways to be able to get around in the map. There's some, and I could remember, for example, in Carl's Bay, to get to one of the visionaries, it seemed as though there was just maybe like three at most. Some areas got a lot more love than others. For example, Alexis's estate. There's so many ways that you can break into that building, and that's when it felt like classic arcane. Also, there's no real collectibles to find within the levels. You are there piecing together information and in different details, but for example, the coins that you get in Dishonored or NPCs and side quests that you pick up with from in Dishonored, that's just non-existent, and it probably is part of the reason why sometimes the game can feel a bit empty and devoid of life. You'll go into a building expecting a secret or some sort of something hidden there, and there's maybe some health and some environmental designs. And while it was aesthetically pleasing, and all of the locations in the game were beautifully done, the art direction is something out of this world 
when it comes to Deathloop, this game knows how to look beautiful as well when it really wants to. The snow, the lighting, the reflections. And this, because I'm recording, isn't even ultra quality. I, I turned down the quality to get better performance in the recordings and... Damn, it still looks good. All the furniture, the wallpaper, hell, the carpets and the rugs all were just great. And it made going into some of these locations worthwhile for that reason. I love the aesthetic of this game. It's just so... Somebody made this. Someone was like, oh, you know what would be a good idea for a bar counter? A head, but half their- a quarter of their face is missing. Like, <laughs> it just has so much flair. But I, I remember especially when you start the game and you're following this linear path and you get into some of these buildings and there's rooms that just exist for the sake of existing and making it feel big, but it just makes it feel kind of empty and devoid of anything. It's just so empty. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's really great looking. I love the detail in the environments. They're done really well, but there's just... There's nothing here. It's just, you, you go, this whole room is designed. But other than being here, it doesn't have a purpose. There's nothing to do. There's the alarm clock to interact with, but there's nothing to do. There's nothing to see. There's, there's nothing to open. The whole point of Deathloop is to find these visionaries and take them out, right? But unfortunately, this is a clear instance where it's more about the journey and not the destination. And ultimately, when you do finally get mano a mano against some of these visionaries, that's where you really start to see the AI fall flat. Charlie! Where are you? Is that you? Hey, Charlie! That was it. Really? The AI in a lot of instances was pretty brain dead. Seeing them running into walls, not having any idea, just mindlessly following Colt leading into a hallway where you can just shoot them right in the head as they pile through and funnel into the room. You didn't... You didn't... You didn't hear that? You didn't see that? Or are you just choosing to ignore it? Sir? Sir, I'm... Hello? Hello? I'm right here! Do you see me? Ultimately, some of it left a lot to be desired. Where its greatest strength was in numbers. When a bunch of them hoarded on top of you and swarmed you and you didn't know where to go and you kind of got boxed in. That was some really fun moments and it led for some really tense gameplay. But when it came to the visionaries, they never really used their powers that well. Juliana, who has multiple access to multiple abilities when she is AI controlled, just really highlighted the worst. As she'd kind of just stand still, she'd use them but not properly and kind of just run right in front of you with some of the abilities sometimes. It it really was a lack. But leading up to them was brilliant! Leading up to the fight with the visionaries, some of them was done some so well and it led to some of my favorite moments in the game. Specifically, specifically when they use the environment and the level itself as a weapon. One in particular which was my favorite was if you got caught before you could reach them, they would set off a reactor that would explode unless you could find a way to get around it, disable it, or you had to leave somehow. I thought truly that that was the peak of some of its gameplay. But what about combat? It might seem like I've really been critical of this game so far, but combat is where this game truly shines. It is the smoothest that it's ever been in an arcane game before. The shooting actually feels the best it ever has in, in an arcane game. It has, it's almost like Machine Games worked on it, like in Wolfenstein, the shooting is always great. That's something that Machine... <laughs> That's something that those games always really did well. 
but here it, it feels it feels really really tight it the powers allow for so much creativity and i've seen videos of people using them in such interesting ways like teleport you can teleport and swap places with someone but they'll put a mine beneath their feet then swap places blowing that person up or they'll jump out over the water or really high in the air then swap with somebody letting them fall and die from the height and just the powers allow you to set up really incredible things the gunplay is the best even better than prey which i thought was pretty good i'd be surprised if they didn't get help from Wolfenstein and the Machine Games team here, as it genuinely felt as though if Wolfenstein gunplay meets Deathloop gameplay, just had a baby and spit it out, it would be Deathloop. It was fantastic. And if anything would get me to go back to the game, it would be one, to try out the different builds as I mentioned earlier, but two, also to really hop in and just experiment and play and have fun with the hordes of enemies. The enemy count in the game is much higher than I remember seeing in the past and they will swarm you. Your character is the invader. The invader has proceeded to the underground cave. I'm scared. There was one instance where there are certain enemies in the game who can radio for backup if they do see you. And there was only one instance in the game where I actually saw them just physically appear. They just manifested right in front of me. Unfortunately, I didn't get a recording of it, but they do just spawn in when you get caught in that fashion. Uh, however, most of the time you'll see them running from different parts of the island. Towards the end of the game, when you have your abilities, you've infused. There is an ability called infuse, which allows you to keep items between runs. When you get to the end of it and you have the gear you want, you can pull off a lot of really badass things and you really feel like just a top-notch assassin. Like you genuinely have been doing it for years and it makes you feel like a grade A certified badass. Stealth is fun in the game, and the gameplay is where the entirety of it really does shine. Stealth is fun, but getting caught is even better, as you have to live with the mistakes since there's no save feature in Deathloop. So you have to live, fight, survive, try to hide, whatever you can do, but it makes it one really really tense and two just simple fun trying to fight your way out of some of these situations is one of the best moments i've had and my favorite and most memorable moments that i got out of death loop death loop is certainly a case where it's the sum of its parts and not the individual aspects of it that is the primary reason i would recommend it to everybody because at the end of the day death loop does the most important thing that the game can do which is it's fun it's just simple fun fun and it knows this and I praise Arcane and Dinga and the rest of the studio for taking the risk that this was and they did something that genuinely feels like a passion project that they put so much love into you can just tell and it makes it it radiates through everything that you do in the game and even though some aspects I've been critical I've been harsh in this review I really have. None of it truly detracts away from the experience that is the entirety of this game. I also did get a couple bugs. I've heard that there is some PC issues. I got a couple. I had some PC issues where my frame rate would just start stuttering. I know my computer would handle it. I played for the most part both at 2K as well as 1080p and it ran fine at 60 frames per second using a 2080 and i7 8700. I was able to get solid frame rates but a couple instances it would start stuttering nothing that completing the loop and then closing and reloading the game wouldn't fix but they were there i've heard that there's already a patch in the works i saw things that people could actually already install it on reddit which was kind of interesting so it will be worked out the other big one was audio bugs. Music would just randomly stop and audio was the big thing. Right from the gecko of the game, I won't forget that it just, the, the sync was off. Oh shit, that's not Can good. you just hurry up already? Yeah, there's some audio bugs. Right from the gecko. It's okay. <gasps> I'll probably forget because oh, it happened right in the beginning. <laughs> During the gameplay itself, music would freeze and just pop in and out and gunshots would be completely delayed and it wouldn't be fixed. It just made me want to get out of the level as soon as possible because as soon as I did and went on to the next one, it'd be fine. But for that moment when I was listening to it, it was genuinely pretty painful.
And lastly, I had one throughout the entirety of playing Deathloop, which was probably somewhere around 16 to 20 hours. I had one crash to desktop and that was it. So now we get to the final score. And right here, we're going to be going with an Angry Joe scale, which means a 5 is an average game, not the 7 that IGN would give for just an okay game, right? And the final score for Deathloop is going to be an 8 out of 10. I desperately want to give this game a 9, but even still, I have to say all of the complaints that I have are nothing compared to the sheer amount of simple fun that I had while playing Deathloop. There was never a dull moment, and I'm honestly upset that the experience is over. I will end up going back, not right away, mind you. My biggest bugaboo with the game not being the AI, not being the uninteresting boss or boss fights, they're not really bosses, but you know what I mean, it's more so the fact that there's only one way to complete this loop, which is completely contradictory to the open-endedness that usually we're given with an arcane-style game, and that was my biggest problem, but nothing that I mentioned in this review pales against the sheer amount of fun. The style of the game, it has a distinct and very unique direction that it went in, and it knows exactly what it wants to be, how it wants to be, and it executes on that perfectly. The IGN conversion would almost certainly be that 10 out of 10, and for sure, Deathloop is going on my Game of the Year nominees list, which means I understand why some of these people are giving it those perfect scores. I really, really do, and I think that for what it's worth, I would have been there if it weren't for some of the reasons that I have listed earlier. With that said, I absolutely think at an 8 out of 10, the game is worth full price, and again, I will be revisiting in the future, but... I want to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with what I had to say here? Do you have your own opinions? Please let me know down in the comment section below. And I really hope you enjoyed this. It was my first review. First review I've ever done. <laughs> so let me know how it was. I want any feedback that you guys can give. If you've watched this far, mwah, true MVPs. You guys are the golden geese in all this, or the golden eggs in this community here. I really appreciate you for that. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more Bethesda centric content. As always, I hope to see you all next time. So long, everybody. I'll see you in the next loop. Wait, no, I broke it. So I won't. Ha! <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs>